ओम अज्ञान तिरंदस्य ज्ञानांजन शलाकाय चक्षुरुन्नतम येना तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग टुडे मॉर्निंग फॉर दिस गीता कोर्स एंड टुडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग वन ऑफ द स्वीटेस्ट एंड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट वर्सेस फ्रॉम अ प्रैक्टिकल पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन द भगवत गीता and we will look at this uh, versus application right from the basics of uh, human psychology and human society to the highest levels of uh, spiritual happiness and uh, divine joy so we, the verse we were discussing is krishna talking about how is devotees reciprocate with each other so mat chitta mat gata pranam bodhayanta parasparam kathayanta shama nityam tushyanti charamanti cha so here he is saying mat chitta mat gata prana so this is mat chitta the uh, the translation here given by shila prabhupada is beautiful it's not just that my devotees think of me but the thoughts of my devotees pure devotees reside in me dwell in me it means the mental home of the devotees is me mat chitta mat gata prana their whole life is devoted to my service it's not just that they thinking passively but rather they are also engaging active actively in connection with me doing various things and a vital part of our life is our interaction with others we are conscious beings we are social creatures so at a mental level at a physical level and at a social level we interact with society in various ways but a primary way is through is through speech so uh that how do this how is the speech spiritualized it is said bodhayantah parasparam bodhayantah that they discuss each other and bodha means actually it is associated word buddha that they buddha is the enlightened one so bodhayantah means to enlighten they enlighten each other bodhayantah parasparam kathayantascha maam nityam in this way mam nityam they constantly in life they they discuss about me constantly and tushyanti charamanti cha they find satisfaction tushyanti and ramanti is that they find great joy in it not just some less peaceful serenity but ramanti is is actually associated uh, often with the male female attraction and the pleasure thereof so the, the when some when say uh, when a when a couple is forming a relationship the generally we don't just talk about oh i am feeling so peaceful and satisfied i am feeling excited i am feeling thrilled so tushyanti refers to that basic to that level of satisfaction and ramanti refers to there is much more than satisfaction there is ex- excitement energy thrill anticipation joy so they get this kind of joy in discussing about me with others so we will <clears throat> this verse is a part of the chatur shloki bhagavad gita uh, verses 10.8 to 11 are the gita's four key verses which which our commentator starting from shri ramanujacharya have said explains the gita's concepts in a in a concise way so the previous verse talks about god's position that he is the source of everything then this verse talks about the that about the disposition of those devoted to god how do they live and then the next two verses talk about the relationship between god and his devotees and in this way this is a beautiful 
uh, four summary verses that how Krishna gives his mercy on his devotees, to his devotees. So let's move forward now. Let's look at this particular verse. So we are, we'll be discussing three things. How we are shaped by our association, how we can choose our association, and how our association affects our spirituality. So at one level, association is a very basic principle that if we outsource our sanity to society. What do I mean by this? That at every moment, our mind presents us say hundreds of options of what we could do. The kind of maybe like from kind of faces that we could make, the kind of words that we might speak. Sometimes we might be upset and we might speak foul words. The kind of actions we might do, which may range from physical aggression or some other actions that are inappropriate, that are discourteous, impolite. And if we were presented all the hundreds and thousands of things that we could do at every moment, we would get overwhelmed by it. So it, uh, it is generally whenever we start doing something or start speaking something, we look at the people around us and we see how are they responding. And based on that, we decide, should I do this or should I not do this? Now, say this is from a, by a child, even a small baby, not just a child. Uh, how does the baby become socialized? That say the baby picks up a object and it's a toy and the baby picks it up and then looks at the mother. And the mother smiles and the baby picks it up and starts playing with it. And say the child picks up a, starts picking up a knife. And the mother, no. Now, as the mother looks alarmed or angry, then the child puts it down. Now, of course, sometimes the child might be naughty and may do certain things against the parent's will. That those are exceptions. In general, we look at the people around us and we get a feedback from that. And for children who are growing up, socializing is very important. It's a vital skill that they need to learn. So every, children, for example, need to play. And if the children are very disagreeable, say if while playing, playing any game, they don't follow the rules of the game or they hit out at others, then other, other children may not play with those children. And then if they don't socialize and socialization happens quite early, when if we, talk, we, talk, uh, we talk about socialization at very various levels. Socializing is meeting with people casually, but socialization is a process of, during one's growth. So say for example, while playing one child pushes another child or one child pinches another child, then how does the child respond to that? What do they do? So they have to, they have to learn the ropes the, themselves. The parents can of course guard and they should, but they can't intervene too much. The point is children learn, oh, while playing, if I, pick, if I do this, oh, everybody disapproves of that. I, I shouldn't do this. So, so basically, we learn to regulate our behavior by the social circle around us. Now here I have it, it used the word sanity because our mind can propose insane options to us. Insane options. And um, say for example, right now I'm speaking something and uh, I'm not seeing you right now because it's not a physical class, but still uh, I can to some extent sense uh, whether a particular, and especially if I was seeing you, then if I saw that whatever I was speaking, everybody is, is, is looking at me strangely. If you are just somebody's frowning at me, somebody's glaring at me, I say, hey, did I speak something wrong? So while speaking also, it's, although it's a speech, it's also a conversation. You may not be speaking right now, but I'm seeing the effect of what is I'm speaking. And based on that, uh, I am moderating and directing my speech. So it's a basic principle, not just of human psychology, but of human society itself, that we are shaped by our association. So 
now it is said that we are sometimes people say that we are animals or we are creatures but we are social creatures so we want and need to be accepted respected and valued in some social circle so the key is some social circle which social circle that will vary so a student goes to school now when especially when parents nowadays they often move because of jobs or other considerations then one major consideration is that in every school or in every college often students form their own groups and a child who goes into a school new has to find some space in some group now some peach some some children might be quite introvert and that's fine it's not that if somebody doesn't constantly want to be surrounded by people that's fine but even introverts need association it is just that they don't want a noisy association they may not want very frequent association but they also need people and they are also shaped by people it's just the way they function the key difference between introverts and extroverts is not that extroverts like people and introverts don't like people both like people but introverts get their energy primarily by being alone and reflecting and then having got that energy their inner emotional energy we could say then they can associate with others properly extroverts on the other hand get their emotional energy by meeting people by discussing talking with people but either way whatever be our psychological disposition still we want social circle some social circle to be belong to to be accepted respected and valued now the our scriptures are filled with examples of how association affects us so association can pull us up in the ramayana is the story of hanuman and sugriva wherein sugriva who was the monarch of the uh, vanaras the simian assistants of ram he was exiled for a long time he was uh, practically fleeing for his life and then eventually he got a kingdom back when he got the kingdom of kishkin the back he at that time he was, he was supposed to use the resources of the kingdom to help ram find sita ram had helped him to get his kingdom and his wife back and sugri was to, supposed to help ram in getting his wife back uh, but at that time severe rain started and sugri forgot sugri couldn't do anything because of the rains and then with nothing to do sugri just lost himself in sensuality it's like nowadays mm, internet usage has increased Pe many many people are doing netflix binging and other things because of the lockdown or at least when the lockdown was at its peak because of the pandemic and with nothing to do what do you do people just go online so sugri who went on his version of online he was a king and he had various sensual pleasures dancing women and entertainers and everything like that so he just forgot himself completely in revelry and the rainy season went one month two months three months of generally the rainy season is about four months in india india has three seasons call it summer rainy season winter this is somewhat different from autumn spring mm, summer and winter in the western world but when the four seasons got over then he still didn't remember so hanuman came there and told him Hey, Sugri. Although Hanuman was a subordinate, Hanuman was a commander or a general. Sugri was the king, uh, but Hanuman reminded Sugri. Then and then Lakshman came and reminded Sugri, and Lakshman was much angry. Lakshman's reminder was uh, far more angrier. Hanuman's reminder was much more much more gentler. But either way, when they reminded him, hey, you are supposed to do this. Okay, 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 okay. So what happened is here. the association with somebody who was uh, who was his well wisher pulled him up so sometimes uh, we might be gliding down because of something and then the association can pull us up conversely association can pull us down this is also described in another story in the mahabharat wherein man wherein kaikai was the queen of dashrath maharaj and she had a 
सेल्फ सर्विंग मेड मंथरा एंड मंथरा पॉइजन कई कई इयर्स मेकिंग हर बिलीव दैट व्हेन राम वाज अबाउट टू बी कोरोनेटेड देर वॉज अ कॉन्स्पिरसी अफूट टू डिप्राइव कई कई सन भरत ऑफ द किंगडम द होल आइडिया वॉज रेडिक्यूलस because normally the kingdom would go to the son who was the oldest and ram was the oldest so uh, so the idea that some that bharat was being deprived of a kingdom that was to which he was not even entitled that was just a uh, that was just not very logically defensible but somehow mantara persuaded and poisoned kai kai and then she asked for two brutal benedictions that ram be exiled to the forest and that sita that uh, bharat be made the king and that was so distressing so devastating for dashrath that he died and it was only uh, uh, later when her own son bharat came and castigated her for what she had done she realized what did i do so basically the association of mantara pulled kai kai down so basically when i'm talking about pulling us up or pulling us down what i mean is that we might be going on a particular trajectory in our life and we might think that these are my decisions but quite often our decisions are not necessarily our decisions in these two examples we can very explicitly see that Say somebody was going on a particular path, and the path they were going was changed by somebody else. It's like we are going on a road, and somebody tells us, "Oh, this is not the road to go. That is the road to go." Oh, okay, I'll go on that road. So association affects our decisions, and the decisions that we take are like the road that we chose in life. Now, in fact, we could say life is like a road on which. at every moment we are on crossroads life is a road in which at every moment we are on crossroads but of course some crossroads are far more consequential than others now every time moment we choose you know should i eat now should i eat later should i sleep now should i sleep later so we choose at every moment but there are some some choices which are especially consequential and Uh, some of, some of those choices we can explicitly trace out that this was affected by this person but even apart from such uh, specific and specifically influenced choices even our overall choices and our overall behavior is shaped by our association it's not entirely determined by our association but it is shaped by our association so now when we talk about association uh, what do we mean association is not just physical proximity but it is transfer of desires so say say we are driving a car and we are giving somebody a ride now we might be we might be we might have something on our mind or they might have something on their mind so we might be in the same car for several hours but we may not not even talk with each other so in that sense we are not really associating with that person but suppose we are driving the car and that person tells us you know okay don't don't go this way go this way why no that's the road to the destination oh okay then we turn and go in that way then there being there there being in our car has affected where we take our car so similarly when we associate with someone when are we associating with that person at of course physical proximity is there one factor but really the essential thing is when they shape our decisions so if they their presence in our life is not shaping our sometimes the decisions are not in our control but at least our desires are to some extent uh, and if they are shaping our desires then that is the uh, that is the effect of association both positively and negatively as we discussed earlier so transfer of desires is the key principle in of association so earlier i talked about how association regulates our behavior or 
not just association, the social circle around us. It determines what is acceptable and what is unacceptable. Say if if um, if a young student is in a social circle where everybody is drinking, everybody is smoking, everybody is making maybe taking drugs, then that student feels pressured to do that activity because of that circle. So on the other hand, if that student is belonging to a group of students who are relatively serious about their studies and are relatively well behaved, and if, they, if that student starts smoking over there and everybody disapproves, okay, he puts aside. That. So what happens is even regulation is a kind of transfer of desire. It's others desire, don't do this and they don't do it. Or others desire, are you a child? When are you going to grow up? Come on, become a, become a young, young person, drink or smoke or whatever is their concocted idea of becoming young or coming of age. So the essence of association is the transfer of desires. Now here, there's a concept which is uh, critical and some of you may have heard of this concept before. It's talk about linear and triangular desires. So linear desire means that we see an object and desire it. You can see that in the straight line on top, the person and the tempting object. On the other hand, if we consider triangular desire, that means that we may or may not be attracted by that object. Say for example, uh, if there's a delicious food item, we might see that food item and desire, oh, I want to eat this. But suppose somebody sees a cigarette or somebody sees uh, um, a drug injection or something like that, a drug packet, they may not be attracted to it immediately just by seeing it. However, if somebody opens a drug pack and then breathes it in or takes a shot or whatever, this feels so good. Now, of course, it's going to feel very bad afterward when one gets addicted. But at least at that time, it feels so good. Oh, really? It feels that good? I, let me try it out. So in that case, in this case, what happened? It is not just looking at that object that created the desire, but looking at somebody who was enjoying or endorsing that object that created the desire. So many of our desires are triangular. And here I use the word tempting object, but this principle applies for any kind of object that we may interact with. It also applies especially for spiritual things because not all spiritual things may look attractive to us when we, when we catch sight of them. Some of them may, some of them may not. And if they don't look attractive, then it is when we associate with those who find them attractive and that was what attracts us. So we may not look at, we may, some, some of us may have seen a Bhagavad Gita and felt, oh, I want to read this. <clears throat> well, if we are <clears throat> very interested in spirituality and know the Bhagavad Gita to be a spiritual book, or if you're generally interested in the reading, then that might happen. But most people may feel, oh, there are so many books. Even if I'm a good reader, why read this particular book? But if you he heard somebody say, somebody whom we like, somebody whom we trust, this is a great book. I learned so much from this. Oh, really? Okay, maybe I should read it. So quite often, <clears throat> the things which are beneficial or uplifting for us, they don't necessarily look attractive. And that is why having the association of those who uh, will, who will help us, that is uh, who will trigger our desire for that object is very important for us. That's how our desire will grow. So now this is, first part was how we are shaped by our association. That is our desires, our decisions are shaped by our association. Now, how we can choose our association? What do, now, do we need to just break part? So what can we choose? So earlier I said that we need to, we need, we've all want and need to be, uh, accepted, respected and valued in some social circle. But we can choose which social circle we wish to belong to. That is critical for us. We can choose that, which social circle. 
so parents know that they need to monitor who the friends of their kids are because as their friends are the kids will become like that and one of the anxieties for parents when say students go out of that or their children go out of their homes to resident school uh, college or school then oh you know what kind of kids are my what kind of kids are my my kids hanging out with so they have to hang out with some kids that they can't change but what kind of kids do they hang out with so we can't choose the principle or choose the fact that we are social creatures we are social creatures that's how we just we are but we can choose which social circle now here i have said that we can't also immediately choose which social circle we belong to we can choose which social circle we wish to belong to there's a difference sometimes our social circle is just determined by some factors beyond our control say especially in the past society was much more stratified now it is much more you could say diverse and integrated although the extent of diversity and integration is open to question so for example if i belong to a particular social group in india it might be a caste caste in america it might be the nationality uh, or it might be just region even if it's not so much caste or uh, caste or race rather it might just be region so because of that say if a student goes to a uh, a student goes to a particular university or say indians come to indians go to america then they may find that they may join some or social circle of people from their region so indians from maharashtra may have a maharashtra mandal indians from andhra might have a, a telugu group so similarly latinos um, uh, or russians might have their own group so now by default we end up belonging to certain social circles so and we can't change that Uh, entirely but we can at least choose which do i wish to belong to so for example even in a in a particular social circle there could be smaller smaller circles within that also so even within say a particular group which group do i wish to belong to so we can choose which social circle we wish to belong to and then gradually we can reposition ourselves so that we can belong to that circle so 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 for example i'll come to this point later that we may we may we may be on the spiritual path and we may want to associate with people who are also spiritually minded but just by birth or by by family ties through marriage or whatever else we may be, we belong to a particular social circle that is the family and we can't change that because uh, that's what we are positioned so we can't entirely choose our social circle but we can choose our desires and changing our association is also not possible but what we can do is we can't always change the people who are around us but we can change the people who get inside us get inside us means that who are the people who influence us who who influence our decisions we may adapt some of our routines for the people around us and that might not be very consequential i okay, do this in the morning or do this in the afternoon or do this way, do, do this way first do that way first but there are other decisions which are much more consequential so when the people get inside us means that like earlier i said the transfer of desires happens that their desires determine our desires and that can very easily become unhealthy so we can change the people who get inside us how do we do that by <coughs> choosing who we are influenced by by we can't stop people from being around us but if we can choose i want to be influenced more by this person than this person then we can ward ward off some unhealthy influences and have some uh, healthy influences and this is if we want to grow in our lives in any in an area this is a key principle make friends with those who want the best for you 
Now, at one level, this might seem to be like a no-brainer. Why call it a key, key principle? But it is a key principle because often we don't really we choose the social circle based on quite often people with whom we feel good, or more than that, people by being with whom. we feel that society will think good about us and say in in college students might want to hang out with the cool crowd but the cool crowd may not always be the best crowd and in the cool crowd is it that people really care for each other is it that those people want the best somebody you say who offers us uh, something to do which is some somebody who offers some tell somebody let's drink or let's take some drugs Do they really want the best for us? Do they even care for us? Not really. Not not really. Or even if they care for us, do they have the maturity, the wisdom to actually do something good for us? So, regulating our association is vital for our growth in in area any area of life. Now, if we want to grow in our profession, some in every profession there are people who are just uh, lackadaisical. they're just uh, nowadays it's a competitive environment and everybody has to perform but some people just perform at the basic level and they are getting getting along and some people are are trying to excel so if we want to excel in our profession associate with those who are excelling make friends with those now we come to the third last part of our session how our association affects our spirituality so this is a key principle which if we understand as in let's state in this diagram we can minimize a lot of conflicts while maximizing maximizing the constructive aspect of our life so here you will see that if we are relating with we are on a spiritual journey then we have a relationship with krishna that is our first relationship then we have a relationship with others that's our we could say second relationship and then they have their relationship with krishna so quite often whenever we are growing spiritually you know we want others also to grow spiritually that means we want them to develop their relationship with krishna so now and sometimes we put a lot of pressure on them you know visit visit the center read this book chant this mantra eat this kind of food don't eat that kind of food do things this way don't do the things that way and this when we when we put too much pressure on them to develop their relationship with krishna because of that our this three because of pressuring them to develop three there is a our the two relationship the relationship between us and them gets strained by that and then when that relationship gets strained then then the one relationship that is our relationship with krishna also gets disturbed so <clears throat> if we understand that every soul has free will and everybody is at their place in their journey of spiritual evolution and we can't force anyone to advance faster then what they want to then we won't pressure them for the third we can facilitate them but don't pressure them and in general if we give people their space they will give us our space now very few people are say if we tell somebody don't eat meat you say they may object to that but very few people are actually going to force us to open our mouth and stuff meat into our mouth no okay if i don't want to eat okay fine they may not be very happy about it but they're not going to force us so the point is that if we let them if we let them explore this third relationship at their pace we can we will also be get get getting the space to develop our relationship with krishna that's the first relationship so in this way we can minimize conflicts ideal would be of course if we are growing spiritually and they are also growing spiritually Now, sometimes, however, it may happen that 
the people who are with us then one one question over here was do i need to give up my friends for growing spiritually well it's not necessary but it's not always necessary but sometimes it may be say for example if this person the, the third relation the, the relationship between us and the other person it blocks our relationship with krishna that is if this person instead of being he, here uh, from 1 to 2 from from between us us to them if that person comes between us and krishna and blocks us so then they that blocks us means what they obstruct us in some core devotional activities or prevent us from doing those core devotional activities then we may have to reconsider now maybe we need to create some distance in that relationship so that we have our space to practice so in some cases it may be required but as i said in general in today's world uh, people don't people are not forced no people will give each other the space it's only when we encroach on other people's space then they start encroaching on our space so in uh, in general if we recognize that the the numbering i have given 1 2 3 it's not just for visual referencing it's also for priority if we are on a spiritual journey we understand that our relationship with krishna is ultimately the most important but that doesn't mean all other relationships are unimportant you know our relationship with uh, our family members our friends that's also important and one and two can go together in their own space if if one and two if the second relationship works in such a way that nourishes the first because if the other person is also developing their relationship with with krishna that's great but even a, so if the ideal would be there is a harmony or we could say synergy in one and two but if synergy is not there then we can have if there is no concord we can have categorization okay this is my relationship with krishna this is my relationship with you and keep the two separate we don't have to have conflict concord is both go together conflict is the two pull us apart okay, so we could say like a pendulum concord is one thing conflict is other extreme in between will be categorization or compartmentalization compartmentalization is so you do uh, you know this is my relationship with krishna this is my relationship with you during this time this is what i'm going to do but this time i'm available for you so we can compartmentalize and that way also we can move forward in our lives so now even so this is how our spirituality can association can affect our relationships now even in association we need to choose the right association the right association means that we want like minded association not all devotees think in similar ways and even though everybody is on a spiritual journey not everybody uh, thinks similarly about about spirituality so like minded association it actually enables us to breathe free, freely and live freely in our spiritual journey so for example what do you mean by like minded association say we like to read a particular book and if somebody thinks hey that book is not 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 relevant this book is more important and it's a, both books are spiritual but if somebody starts criticizing why are you criticizing me for reading this book no no that's not a, you should read this book then no but i am attracted to this book so what happens is the social the social pressure created by that person makes us feel as if makes us feel inhibited in making a choice that is spiritual so sometimes we feel choked by that so we can't breathe freely so that's the unlike minded association what it does is we feel choked we feel suffocated and we feel like we are walking through a mind field why a mind field because we feel that you know anything that i do it might cause this person to explode it might make them angry so in the bhakti rasamrut sindhu the nectar of devotion which is a important guide book for bhakti yogis 
it's explained that we need sajatiya ashaya bhagavat bhakta sangha sajatiya ashaya means like minded association not just like minded it's a more specific word it is that those who have the same category of desires sajatiya same category same kind those who have the same kind of desires we need to associate with them now of course this brings us to an important point that even people who are like minded are not alike people who are like minded are not alike in in entirety everybody is an individual and everybody is unique so in any relationship there has to there is both similarity and dissimilarity so similarity brings some stability some security so for example if we express some basic opinion or we express some basic thought and we know that okay this person is comfortable i can discuss it with him but say we say no yesterday i was reading reading the krishna reading the krishna book or yesterday i was reading Bhag bhagavad gita and, oh yes what did you read about which section were you reading what did you like about it when they ask that way then that creates some comfort and that stability yes we can discuss now but if they say if say you say i was reading the bhagavad gita and other person doesn't even know what is the bhagavad gita or doesn't care at all for the bhagavad gita then we don't know how do i discuss forward so there is similarity that brings stability but we don't want we can't have entirely identical people for us around us so there will be dissimilarity also and that dissimilarity doesn't have to be always bad it can bring novelty so but there has to be the foundation of stability uh, sorry foundation some foundational stability has to be there and then there can be some some novelty within that foundation so for example the two two people come together to hear, hear a spiritual talk and then so they, they have similar interests and then they discuss with each other what did you like in the talk because each one is an individual going through their particular situations in life so one person might be might find a particular point spoke to them another person might find a different point spoke to them and that dissimilarity brings novelty and this is what brings us back to the point of uh, this verse bodhayantaha parasparam krishna says that the the devotees enlighten each other it's interesting because in the previous verse krishna says those who become devoted to me are enlightened mat aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante maam budha bhava samanvitaha to budha those who know that krishna is the source of everything they are budha they are wise at the same time despite being they are already being enlightened or wise till they make each other's wise they 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 are enlightened and they enlighten each other why is that because it is here it is said that knowing krishna is enlightenment but because krishna is infinite and we are finite so each one of us knows krishna from a different perspective and when we we all want to know krishna and then we associate with each other oh you you are appreciating this point in this way i am appreciating this point in this, this point in this way so it was same point we might appreciate in different ways or within this within the same topic we might appreciate different points and that brings novelty and no we need to uh, um, we need to analyze things from different perspectives and appreciate things accordingly and that is uh, that can enhance our understanding so that that is very it's not only uh, something which is mind expanding but it is also heart enriching oh this is how wonderful krishna is 
So even for the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different acharyas who have written commentaries. So they are they all venerate Krishna. They all are devoted to Krishna. But at the same time, they may relish the same verse from a different perspective. And the similarity, oh, this is a book on the Bhagavad Gita. That brings stability. The similarity is, oh, this is an individual. Each person is an individual and each person appreciates things from different perspectives. That dissimilarity brings novelty. So now, healthy relationship is a general principle. It has the, there's a balance of predictability and unpredictability. So predictability brings stability and unpredictability brings novelty. So when we say we need like-minded association, what does that mean? We could say at a very basic level, those who share our definition of success. Our definition of success means what is really valuable in life. Even within, even within the devotee circle, one, def, one overarching definition of success is we all want to love Krishna. But how do we go about loving Krishna? There could be a lot of differences about that. So some devotees may feel, I want to share spiritual literature with others. I want to distribute books. Some devotees may feel, you know, I want to memorize verses. Some may feel that, okay, you know, I want to build a temple. I want to create some infrastructure for people to connect with Krishna. Now, all these are valid and valuable ways of progressing toward serving Krishna and developing our love for him. But they are quite different in their practicalities. And for us to actually grow spiritually, we need the association of those who support, who share our definition of success. So, okay, what does it mean? It, so it can mean sharing our definition of success can mean, can mean our way of appreciating bhakti. Mm. It can refer to our way of relishing bhakti, our way of sharing bhakti with the world. All these matter for us. So appreciating means uh, it refers to earlier I talked about satisfaction, tushanti and ramanti. So appreciating is how we find satisfaction in bhakti. And uh, Tushanti is how we relish bhakti and our way of sharing bhakti with the, in the world. So all these matter and we need like-minded associations. So, so there are so many devotees who may speak about Krishna, but if you find a particular speaker with whom we can connect with, then we focus on that and grow through that. <coughs> and a couple of concluding points now. When <coughs> we want to grow spiritually we need the association that is where the words that people speak are non-judgmental and confidentiality is maintained now non-judgmentality doesn't mean like just a uncritical acceptance of everything that we do but people are not fixing affixing permanent labels on us and confidentiality means if we speak something, it is not that that is going to be broadcast to the whole world the next day. So if like-minded association also has these two aspects to it. That we are not judged and condemned. And uh, what is spoken in private is kept in private. So we may not have this kind of friends, but we need to seek them and we need to become a friend like that. And within such an association, what will happen? Actually, we, if we have friends like this, we will find that no joy is greater than the joy of discussing and relishing Krishna. The Srimad Bhagavatam talks about Parasparanu Kathanam. That Parasparanu Kathanam is coming together and talking about Krishna. That is, in fact, normally in the material world, it is thought that the greatest joy that the two people can come together and have is is bodily pleasure, sexual pleasure. But the Bhagavatam says that if two people come together and they're like-minded and they discuss about Krishna, the joy that they can get in that discussion can supersede the, even the greatest joy in the material world. And throughout, in fact, most of our sacred texts 
or conversations wherein there are uh, spiritually minded uh, teachers and seekers who come together and discuss and in that discussion the supreme illumination and the supreme joy is to be found so this is a vital and a vibrant limbo bhakti which we can tap to make our spiritual journey as relishable as possible so i'll summarize i spoke today on the topic of association and we discussed three questions how does our association a shape our desire how 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 does association matter to us so i talked about we outsource our sanity to society socialization socializing that socialization that happens for children determines uh, wherein they look for others whether it's the parents or other kids and based on that they regulate their behaviors and uh, we discussed with respect to association can it can pull us up it can pull us down the example of hanuman being pulled up by sugri and mantra pulling kaike down and then the essence of association is not physical proximity but transfer of desires and after that i talked about uh, how, what can we choose we can't choose our social circle entirely but we can choose which social circle we wish to belong to within a particular social circle that we are biologically or sociologically thrust into we can find we can carve out or find a smaller social circle that is compatible for us and we we can't choose the people who are around us but we can just choose the people who get inside us and for that purpose what do we do we we need to befriend those who want the best for us so during our normal times during our contemplative times we understand who is on a healthy chart in their lives healthy track in their lives and then make them as the major influencers for us and the last day i discussed about how our association affects our spirituality so i talked about you know three things our relationship with krishna our relationship with others and their relationship with krishna so if we force them to develop their relationship with krishna then they may become um, hostile and that will affect our relationship with them and in turn may affect our relationship with krishna also so give others space and they will give us space but if others encroach on and choke us in our relationship with krishna then that kind of relationship we might have to distance ourselves from it and which relationship we should we cultivate even within bhakti it is devotees who are like minded those who share the same kind of desires that we have the same definition of success which means how how we appreciate relish and share bhakti and if we find such association which we can find by cultivating confidentiality and non judgmentality we can develop those virtues and gradually we'll find others also who share those virtues and we can move forward and if in the so in such a discussion we can get a joy those who are enlightened can become more enlightened also because we can keep knowing about krishna from different perspectives and there it we can find life's greatest joy thank you hare krishna okay so if you have a friend with whom you like to discuss uh discuss uh about spirituality but you can't find the time for it or she can they can't find the time for it so what what can we do well there are three different aspects to this if some relationship you find uh, very very enriching for us then we need to make the arrangements for getting that association so plan in advance and then even if it's once a month even it once in a few months whatever it is find that and relish and treasure that so it, it's not just this is the principle we will discuss later in one of our sessions that there bhakti is not just what we about what we do 
it is much more about what we want to do so even by aspiring for hankering for uh, a associ particular association that itself can purify us that itself can energize us spiritually so cherish that and you know we, we even earlier i used to travel now because of the pandemic i am not traveling that much so when i was traveling it was not just to give classes it was also to meet devotees and of course i met devotees in general but there are many devotees who are much more senior to me far wiser and far more advanced than me and associating with them was a very important part of uh, my spiritual growth and because of tra travel when i couldn't associate with them so i have tried to create this a forum for online discussion and that's how recently some of you may know i have started the monks podcast where i invite senior devotees for discussing on some topics and uh, many of the viewers are benefiting from it but more than that i am relishing it so we need to be resourceful sometimes innovative to try to create some platforms where we can get some discussion like that and simultaneously if some people are very busy then then we also need to look for other channels because we need association and sometimes uh, the kind of association that we have may be limited by the by the life situation we or the other person is in so while we can keep the aspiration for associating with that person we can also a <clears throat> look for association that is presently available for us and move onward accordingly so how do we develop how do we build connection with those whose services are different from ours or the services for which we don't have the ability and aptitude for well i would say two three things over there we all um there are some people we have to associate with just because maybe we live with them or close to them or we regularly meet them we do some services with them for whatever reason so if there are some people whom we have to associate with then try to become a little interested in what they are doing so it's at one level we can't entirely choose our interests it is our interests choose us now if say somebody is interested in music then for them to become say interested in cooking well it's it's not the same spontaneous natural attraction toward music that they may have they may never develop that attraction toward cooking but so we we can't we can't always choose our interests but we can choose to be interested choose to be interested means that okay this uh, i want to know about this it's more about uh, a cultivated curiosity rather than a spontaneous curiosity so for some people who whom we are regularly associating with and we want to develop a better connection with them then just become interested in them ask questions uh, ask them questions and by such questions okay what do you do how do you go about doing this what are the challenges you face in doing this generally any person we meet if we give them space for uh, speaking about themselves now very few people will uh, will be turned off by that we may have to earn their trust before they speak sometimes but generally just become interested and that way we will at least have a a, a neutral to positive relationship it might not be a very close relationship but it will not be negative so that's with respect to people who are who with whom we have to work we don't want to have a tension tension in that relationship mm. having said that <clears throat> we all have limited time so we need to utilize the limited that time that we have for maximum spiritual growth 
so that's why rather than trying to develop relationships with people whose interests with devotees whose interests are radically different from ours we can focus on those uh, which are the most nourishing for us and we can that way grow in our spiritual life so even with uh, with respect to krishna bhakti there is a ocean to be explored and if we could say it's not just a ocean there are there are oceans to be explored so if we just go into deity worship there is so much we can learn about deity worship we just decide to go into bhagavatam even one canto of bhagavatam there is so much to go into so we can focus on that which energizes or inspires us or that which anyway we have to do because of our services and we relate with devotees accordingly so generally cultivating curiosity is a way of connecting with those who are dissimilar whose services or abilities or aptitudes are different from ours and uh, <clears throat> last question now that so if my family members feel that i'm going too deep into spirituality so but uh if i give time to bhakti if i give uh, give time to friends then will that not if i give time to them then will it not pause my bhakti <clears throat> and i'm still associating with non devotees and should i act materially while being with my non devotee family well i feel that mm, we don't need this very rigid separation between spiritual and material uh because even within material there is the mode of there is in goodness passion ignorance there is there is a human connection that is required <clears throat> yes yesterday uh i was uh, having a podcast with yogeshwar prabhu who is a senior disciple of shri prabhu pad and he told me that when he was in france with prabhupad prabhupad asked him you know prabhupad wanted to ask him how are you doing how is your wife doing is your relationship good and prabhupad said which relationship is good don't anything do anything to spoil it no husband and wife they shouldn't quarrel they should love each other and by that way they will be happy and they can grow nicely so now now this is often the side of spiritual teachers that we may not hear so much because it's all about spirituality but it's not, spirituality is about about not just doing externally spiritual activities it is also about about uh, internalizing the attitude of service and internalizing the attitude of service means that no we serve krishna when we say go to a temple we serve krishna when we are associating with devotees and aiding them in some practical way but we can serve krishna even by serving and helping our family members doing our family responsibilities because krishna is present in their hearts also so will it pause our devotional service well if we have a very a reductionistic understanding of devotional service we think that only when i am going to a temple or i am doing externally devotional activities that my devotion is growing no it's not necessarily like that certainly we do need some amount of uh, some basic amount of time for connecting with krishna our basic spiritual sadhana is there our basic association is there that is vital along with that we also need We, we we can't do this 24 hours a day even if we had to we would, even if we had the opportunity to we may not be able to always so at the other times we can try to bring a service attitude now service attitude means what if we think that rather than simply thinking you know oh this is my spiritual life and this is unfortunately i am caught in the non devotee family uh, don't think like instead of thinking like that we can say that whatever is happening in my life ultimately it is a part of krishna's plan even if i say it is because of my past karma i am i am in this situation but still even my the unfolding of my karma is also being overseen by krishna so krishna has a plan for me so if if by krishna's plan i am right now placed in this non devotee family how can i act in the best possible way 
so you know we may well be their their most important connection with krishna and if we come off as uncaring or irresponsible or constantly preoccupied with our spirituality and if they start feeling that that uh, we are neglecting or rejecting them then that may make them neglect and reject krishna i don't want to become like this person if i become spiritual so now we may not want to become entirely like them we don't want to become materialistic but rather than thinking simply as the options of spiritual and materialistic we can say that we can connect with others at a human level at a human level means be warm be polite be helpful now as far as being materialistic with them well we need to have some boundaries say for example we may not want to eat meat but we all can negotiate other boundaries of what what we can talk with them what we can do with them and we don't have to see the symptoms of black and white so sometimes like i talked about the horizontal the relationship between us and them and the relationship with krishna sometimes for this relationship with them we may have to do something which are which are not exactly devotional but that's okay we see that as a investment in our relationship with them so as long as our devotional principles are not being directly violated then to some some amount of latitude for establishing a human connection is fine that's what, uh, <clears throat> okay and on the same lines there's a question that what if what if a family member or a life partner belongs to a different sect then what do we do well um it is give them their space and if they are believing in something or they are practicing something different from what we are doing that's okay it's not a uh, uh, it's not a, at least they are in some way inclined towards spirituality interested in spirituality and that's good so keep moving forward accordingly and over a period of time uh, we will find out that we can share some things although we may differ in certain things so again the same principle so let them approach their spiritual journey their quest of the ultimate reality in their way like let them explore their path up you make sure that we are moving forward and find some common ground so it's uh, at a, sometimes we get too caught in philosophy or in practices now we say what is spirituality apart from philosophy and practices you know it is what we say believe and what we do yeah that is true but we could say that beyond the philosophy and the practices is the overall attitude or disposition so we we may practice different things we may even believe different things but we are all human beings and at a deeper level even they even if they are following a different path that they are also souls who are parts of krishna so connect with each other at a human level and if they are already committed to some other spiritual path then don't uh, don't harp on the differences too much just focus on the similarities and carve out your own space for your spiritual growth thank you very much hare krishna bhagavad gita ki jai hare krishna thank you bro